Welcome back to another Tactical Fly Fisher video today. Uh, today we're going to cover a fly that um, has been asked for a lot. But first, let me back up just a second. I have four tutorials that I've shot uh, over the last couple days that I will be doling out over the next month or two. Um, I'm just about to head to the national championship, so I wanted to get this one out before I left, but uh, the other three are gonna come afterward. But these are what I'm calling my flies of the year. So they're just patterns that in 2023, I you know, messed around with uh, some, some patterns or one comes from my teammate Jack. Um, and they're all flies that have now made it into kind of my confidence working fly boxes for various competitions or various times of the year. Uh, so we're first um, gonna do the foam front and loader caddis, which is uh, one that a lot of you've been asking for lately since I've fished it in quite a few of the on the water videos that we've done this year. And then we'll have a couple of paradigons and uh, another fly called the doppelganger pheasant tail after that. Um, but the foam front end loader is uh, one that I was thinking about the, the front end loader and just how to build a little bit more buoyancy into it and maybe have uh, a little less uh, TLC that it takes with powders or various products to keep it floating when I'm using it with a nymph. So um, the original front and loader is still a great dry dropper fly and maybe gets eaten a little more um, by itself as a dry fly. Uh, but the foam front and loader, I actually first tied it in January, took it to the river a couple days later, and in the middle of January, I was having fish come up and eat it. Who knows why? Because there hadn't been caddis around in a long time, but it'll still catch fish. Uh, one quick thing I wanted to add before I get tying here, uh, this pattern is now in the Fulling Mill catalog and uh, we have them in the store. So if you happen to not be a tyer or maybe you don't want to tie a dry fly like this, you can uh, go ahead and purchase them straight from our shop. Um, but if you do want to tie them, stick around right now and I'll teach you how to do it. Okay, this is what the finished foam front end loader is going to look like. So. Let's get a fresh hook in there and give it a spin. This is a size 12 Fulling Mill 50-50 uh, Ultimate Dry Hook. I also really like the Dohiku 301 for this fly. I use them both kind of interchangeably. Now I've got some 30 denier, which is the 18-aught uh, Semperfly Nano Silk. And I am just gonna cover the hook with that thread. You could also use some, you could also use some Uni ADOT um, Rusty Dunn. That color matches pretty well. Um, but this Nano Silk will not build up really any bulk and you can really crank on it and not have to worry about breaking the thread. So um, it's a thread I like to use a lot for uh, any fly like this where I might need to really bind something down hard um, but uh, the really thin thread that it is. Um, but with the nano silk, I don't have to worry as much about whether I crowd the eye of the fly because uh, it just has so little bulk. Okay, so I have three strands of chartreuse uh, globe right here. This is globe right number 12. And I'm going to do a pinch wrap. So I know I've demonstrated this a lot before, but it's a really important technique to be able to tie down materials in a specific location on a hook. So uh, I've taken and I, I'm holding those three fibers between my thumb and my index finger here over the hook. I'm going to take the thread, pinch it between those fingers, go around and below, and then lift back up and let that thread slide through my fingers as I apply some pressure. Then I'm gonna just make a few wraps toward the back, kind of loose wraps, so that I can pull that globe right underneath. And um, then I'll just put some more wraps through the, to really bind it down. Globe right is pretty, or uh, nano silk is pretty slick as a thread, so you do sometimes have to put a few more thread wraps in place to really bind something down. Okay, so now I've got some foam here. I'm just gonna cut a little bit of an angle on both 
sides so that it comes toward a point. That's just for aesthetics on the fly. Then I will tie that in over the back of the hook and kind of cover that hot spot tag. It's just to get some foam over the back for extra flotation. Put a couple of wraps in and I'm gonna do quite a few wraps there to make sure that this foam stays in place. Okay, perfect. Now, now I have some Semperfly Micro Fritz, and this is gonna go in place of dubbing. You certainly could use some dry fly dubbing at this point, but this Micro Fritz um, this is a nice easy material to just wrap in place of that, so I figured I'd highlight it. It's a material I've played a lot around with over the last year or two since it came out. So I'm just gonna pinch that, uh, pinch wrap that in right at the base of the foam, and then wrap that thread forward about two thirds of the way of the hook shank. I wanna leave a pretty good gap there at the front to tie in the wing and the hackle. And I'm gonna use the rotary function on this Stonfo vise. So um, I put in a whip finish to hold the thread in place there. And then you, you won't see it in the frame, but I've got a bobbin cradle resting the thread out in front of the hook here. And I'm just gonna go ahead and wrap up the body of the fly. Make some touching turns, you may need to overlap a little bit on some of them just to make sure you get good coverage and taper. Go ahead and tie that in and tie it down. And you could leave this in at this point because you're gonna use that same material on the thorax, but it kind of gets in the way of some of the rest of the steps if you leave it there. So I, I normally trim it out. And I'm just gonna tie that foam down again. Now you could make this into some sort of, you know, bigger terrestrial type version of this pattern by um, leaving this out here. But then I'd probably want to substitute the hackle stacker um, part of the fly with something else. So we're going to stick with this original caddis version of it. I tie some other cicada and kind of just foam terrestrial patterns in other ways with similar materials. Um, all right, next we're going to add in our our wing. So uh, this is EP fibers, but I use EP trigger point fibers or hairline parapost fibers. There's also a new yarn from Folling Mill called Ultra Dry Yarn, and uh, that's what they use on the commercial version of this fly that is now being produced for us and for other fly shops through Folling Mill. So I'm going to take, and I, I've got a fairly um, skimpy amount here, not super skimpy, but uh, basically, this is going to be half the wing on one side. So you want uh, to pluck off about half of what you think the full wing is going to be off of the hank of yarn. And I'm just going to tie that in kind of facing on the far side of the hook here. And then pull the longer piece here towards me and crank it down again with some thread. And make sure you get the thread actually binding the base of that down, especially with this super thin and super slick nano silk. Sometimes you, it slides off of it. So you may have to make quite a few wraps pushing towards the back to really get it to bind. There we go. And also I can see that, ta <clears throat> that tag at the back got a little pushed to the side when I cranked that down. So. I'm just correcting that with my thumb. And I'm just going to come in here and trim the wing. We'll leave it at a rough length for now. And now I want to add just a little bit of indicator post. And you can see that wing is still propped up because I'm, I haven't gotten enough thread towards the back. But that's going to get fixed probably as we add some more materials here. So I've got Hairline pair post for some indicator wing there here. Uh, orange or pink works great, or any other color you think might uh, work for you, but orange and pink I see the best. So when I'm tying this in, uh, I think that's probably a about 
25% more than I want, so I kind of split it, take about a quarter of the fibers out. So I want this to be enough to see, but not overwhelm the wing. Okay, so I've taken some of that out. I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna tie it in longer here to begin with for uh, a reason that will become obvious here in a minute. Do a pinch wrap, fold that other half over, pinch wrap it down again, or just start wrapping over it. And then I'm gonna wrap over the base of that a little bit to try and compress that wing down and make it face back. Okay, cut that even to begin with. We're gonna shorten that up in a minute. Now, next, I've got some thin, uh, small diameter Liflex here. It doesn't really matter what color because it's gonna be hidden, but this does kind of match the color of the fly here. I don't remember which color this is labeled. Um, but you wanna cut probably about four inches of this. So the fibers are gonna come a little bit longer. They're probably six inches long or so. So I've cut a couple inches off and I'm just gonna take and, and uh, fold one or fold that cut fiber in half and even up the, the tips so that I have a loop sitting here and tie in the tips. Kind of loose to begin with, and I'm going to pull those back under just like that. Let's see if I can trap that. There we go. Trap that under so I don't have to trim it. Next, I'm going to add my hackle. Okay, so this is just a grizzly feather from a Whiting 100 pack. Um, this is a size 12 fulling mill hook. And now these dry flies run just a little bit shorter than the Dohiku uh, 301s, the dry fly hook in that. So normally with a size 12 Dohiku hook, I will upsize the hackle by one and go to a 10. This is gonna stay true to size. This is a size 12 hackle. You could still upsize and it wouldn't be a big deal. Um, I, I do like to have a pretty good footprint of that hackle because the whole point is to help float the front of the fly because I normally fish this dry fly on a tag end or a, on a dropper tag. And it's got a, a lot of times it has a nymph below. So that's the whole point of the front end loader aspect of it is to have that footprint out the front. So having extra hackle and wider hackle is not a bad thing. Uh, I am tying in that micro fritz again, just in front of everything else. Okay, and then I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing, make a whip finish here, bring out the bobbin cradle. And use the rotary function to wrap this. And if it's causing you problems with it sliding off the thread ramp here, you can actually kind of go down and then come back up it so that you have more of the fritz itself to bind into. And I'm gonna just place the last couple wraps by hand there without the rotary. There we go. We got the thorax we need. We did get a couple of the indicator fibers trapped. So I'm gonna trim them out. It's one of the reasons I leave them long because this next step you're going to see that they can kind of get caught in the wrapping of the hackle. But if they're longer, they're easier to pull out. Okay, so now I'm going to take my finger and you won't see this probably in the frame of the camera. So I'll show you here. I'm going to take that loop of, of rubber leg and stick my finger in it. Hold it up kind of tight. This is my right index finger for you, those of you who are right handed. And then I also make a couple of twists with that just to bring those fibers together and that way they won't split apart or spread apart and then split the hackle. Okay, so I've stretched this now. I'm going to go ahead and wrap probably four to five times up this. And I've gone a little long, I think, on the rubber leg here, so it's actually a little bit hard for me to keep it stretched. Yeah. 
If you get wing fibers trapped in there, just pull them out as you go if you can. And if not, like those ones are bound in there, we'll just cut them out at the end. Okay, so I've got about four wraps there, and now I'm going to wrap back down toward the base of that post. All right. Stroke those fibers out of the way. Try not to get any poking out front because if you're going to wrap with thread here in a minute and you'll end up trapping them. All right. Make two loose wraps, kind of pinch wraps there, and then pull on the rubber leg out in front of the fly while you maintain a loose tension with the thread. And that'll tilt everything down and trap the hackle and that post underneath it against the fly. And now I don't even have to tie off the hackle because that pressure there is gonna keep everything in place. And make sure you stroke everything out again. There's a couple of shorter fibers that are poking out there that I'm gonna end up just having to trim. But tie that down. I'm gonna get a little bit of super glue. Put that near the fly there on the thread. Trap some super glue on a couple of wraps and then do a quick whip finish. And there we go. Okay, I'm gonna get in there and just jab with my scissor tips to cut the thread because I don't want to cut any hackle fibers. Do the same thing on the rubber leg. Find the base of that with your tips. Just kind of slide them down and then just jab. And the same thing with the hackle fiber or the hackle quill itself. Get in there with your tips, go to the base and jab. And I'm then going to just trim out those couple little hackle fibers that are bugging me. So that just doesn't look hokey. It'd be fine. Certainly fishable and I'd still get tip it through, but it bugs me. Now I'm going to try and find the indicator fibers here, just the indicator fibers, and trim them so they're about a third shorter. And then maybe cut a little bit off that wing as well. It's a little long still. Okay, so that is the finished foam front end loader. I got a couple more indicator fibers to trim out there. But give that a try. It'll hold up a dropper. It'll get fish to take it too. And uh, it's worked really well for me on the water, both you know, just kind of as an indicator on a dry dropper rig and also as a fish catcher. So I hope uh, you give it a try and that it has the same, same uh, sort of success for you. All right, thanks for watching this tutorial. Uh, I hope it makes it clear enough how to tie the foam front end loader caddis. And I uh, hope that it works for you out there on the water. If you liked it, give us that thumbs up on the video. Subscribe to the Tactical Fly Fisher channel. But most of all, come over to tacticalflyfisher.com where in the blog post that I've linked in the description below, you can find the materials for this fly um, with uh, various substitutions of, of materials that are pretty close um, so that if we happen to be out of one, we'll hopefully have another for you. Uh, thanks for watching again. Happy tying, happy fishing, everybody, and stay fishy out there on the water.